Hello, welcome to my reflective assignment created by Mr. Cadero D. Johnson. For this assignment, I was encouraged to engage in a holistic reflection on my learning experience in this course. I have decided to use John Driscoll's What model as my guide to reflect on what I have learned throughout the course. Having an experience in EDLM 8130 Evaluating Quality in Technology-Enabled Educational Environments Using John Driscoll's What Model Quality assurance is the process of checking whether your services are meeting your desired quality standards. For example, this often includes monitoring and evaluating customer service calls, chats, and other interactions between your employees and your customers. Quality assurance assessment ensures the day-to-day -day compliance of your team with legal and company regulations. It also ensures that your team is offering what you consider to be a quality service in a way that's standardized. The quality assurance process helps a business ensure its products meet the quality standards set by the company or its industry. Another way to understand quality assurance is as a company's process for improving the quality of its products. Many businesses view their quality assurance program as a promise to internal stakeholders and customers that the company will deliver high quality products that provide a positive user experience. What a description of the event. This course has redefined excellence, standard, and quality in my professional life. I am walking away with a new perspective on these facets of quality assurance, and I must say that it has been a pleasure enrolling in such a course. Quality assurance ensures that the product or program being offered meets a certain standard, and this is something that I will never forget. By way of constant monitoring, evaluation, and reflection, the quality of the product is placed against the desired standard and a decision is made that the product meets that standard. Prior to taking this course, I did not pay close enough attention to quality, but I now realize its importance and the kind of effect it can have on my professional practice my clients, and all stakeholders that are involved in organizations that I am a part of. Purposefully reflecting on selected aspects of the experience. In Module 1, we explored the pursuit of excellence in the context of quality assurance in technology-enabled learning environments. We examined the what, the how, and the why of quality assurance within a specific educational ecosystem. This module has brought to light what quality assurance is and how it presents itself in technology-enabled environments. Zooming in on this, we were able to glance into the standards required for online learning from the nine hallmarks of learning and the APEC Quality Assurance for Online Learning Toolkit, as well as Quality Matters. This module was concluded with the theme Quality Enhancement, which spoke specifically to the need to always improve, enhance, or become better at the services being offered, always ensuring that quality remains the watchword of the day. In Module 2, we explored the fundamental elements of program evaluation, which is an important quality assurance practice. More specifically, we also discussed the importance of the program evaluation process, the reasons why it is conducted, what influences the decision to evaluate a program, and how values, ethics, and politics may influence this process. This module presented four themes that were somewhat synonymous to each other. We discussed what program evaluation was, its importance, ethics, politics, values, and deciding on which programs to evaluate. My takeaway from this module was discovering how fundamental program evaluation 
is to education. This systematic collection of data with its aim to draw conclusions or make judgments about a particular program resonated with me the most. I also discovered that deciding on whether to evaluate a program is not a straightforward process, but one that is worth trying. Many factors are at play when this is an operation that requires careful consideration, both internal and external. Module 3, we were introduced to some of the key activities for effectively planning to conduct an evaluation. These key activities include pre-evaluation activities, deciding on the type of data required, choosing appropriate data collection strategies, and determining which evaluation model is most appropriate. During this module, Four themes were discussed. Pre-evaluation activities, the types of data required for program evaluations, choosing data collection strategies, and the four program evaluation models. When it came to pre-evaluation activities, deciding on which programs to evaluate, internal stakeholder engagement, considering resource availability, and determining which evaluation methods to use were all discussed. As for types of data required for program evaluation, it was mentioned that this process is not as simple as, as it initially appears. Interestingly enough, many people believe that student data drives program evaluation, but this is not the case because it does not provide a holistic picture of the evaluation process and that stood out to me the most. The type of data required for program evaluations really depends on the purpose of the evaluation. Theme 3 showed us how valuable and critical data collection is during program evaluation and how it can sometimes be taken for granted. Choosing how the data will be collected and strategies that can be used to get this done were big takeaways for this module. Finally, program evaluation models, which was discussed extensively by way of group presentations and a forum discussion amongst peers, was the conclusion to this model. The various models are guides as to how to conduct evaluations, the approaches that is to be used to execute the evaluation, and the type of data that is to be collected. This module was the highlight of the course for me. Having the opportunity to work in groups, we were able to form friendship bonds that are still going strong weeks after the group presentation was completed. Then module four shed light on the important considerations that should drive the design and implementation of education programs and technology-enabled learning environments. Two themes were introduced in this module, program design quality in technology-enabled learning environments and program implementation quality in technology-enabled learning environments. During the first theme, the importance of investing time and resources quality if quality is to be achieved. In-person learning was compared to online learning and although stakeholders expected the same procedure to be followed and results achieved, these environments are quite different and so will the results be if the same procedure is followed. Achieving quality in technology-enabled environments requires proper infrastructure and policy frameworks in place. Educational institutions that offer technology-enabled environments establishes specific policies to guide program design. The second theme made mention of the implementation of program design in technology-enabled environments. It is important that institutions put systems in place to maximize the quality of the program. The need for highly trained staff continuous investment in professional development, the establishment of effective monitoring and evaluation systems, and implementing systems of accountability to ensure that quality is maintained always. 
Module 5 focused on matters that were related to the quality of programs delivered in tech-enabled learning environments. A special focus was placed on online learning and we examined the steps that were involved in the evaluation process and some of the challenges that we may have experienced when conducting evaluations. Common prog programmatic issues that occur in technology-enabled learning environments were also examined. This module presented four themes. The evaluation process, the challenges with conducting program evaluations, monitoring program quality in technology-enabled learning environments, and identifying programmatic issues in technology-enabled learning environments. Finally, Module 6 presented four themes which pretty much tie in the entire course. It taught us the ins and outs of writing evaluation reports and important tenets that make this report effective. Preparing an impactful program evaluation report, strategies for developing effective recommendations, common program evaluation recommendation errors, and hallmarks for effective recommendations were all discussed. The need for recommendations that are based on evidence was mentioned and the importance of writing evaluation reports which is the main element that stakeholders are looking for, was one of my biggest takeaways in Module 6. So what? An analysis of the event. One of the highlights of the course was the ability to form friendships through the group assignment. The course was very engaging throughout, and each session had something new that was interesting and interactive. I love how everyone was given the opportunity to interact with each other, whether it was by way of the breakout group sessions or general interactions in the chat. The only bad thing I can pinpoint about this experience would have been the untimely feedback received for assignments. The need to for timely feedback is very integral, especially in online settings. It helps to guide us on correcting errors or mistakes that can be repeated on future assignments. I also love how the professor, professor sorry, showed empathy which caused him to extend the due dates for assignments. I think having empathy is an important skill that we should all have, especially in these types of environments. We are all adults and we must recognize that life happens. Most of us have full-time jobs and families at home and so it becomes sometimes difficult to strike that balance, and I am so therefore most grateful for the extensions that were granted. Now what? Propose actions following the event. Walking away from this course has taught me the value of quality assurance and the importance of designing programs that meet certain quality standards. Prior to this course, I was not so confident in my ability to evaluate or design any program because of limited knowledge. Today, my confidence level has grown tremendously and I find myself constantly thinking of ways I can create high quality programs right in my very own classroom and spread this knowledge with my colleagues and other stakeholders. I am already making plans to host a workshop on quality assurance and conducting a number of training sessions on all that I have learned in this course. This journey from start to finish has been a rewarding one and I am truly grateful for the time and opportunity that I have had with my professor and colleagues. This course has left an indelible mark in my heart and mind and has changed my entire perspective in my professional career. Thank you so much, and this is the end of my reflection.